everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these really sweet kite fold cards. So I actually made these during my last Facebook Live craft along. So if you haven't joined and you're on Facebook and you'd like to just chill out for a couple of hours, then head over to my Facebook page, Mixed Up Craft, and you'll be able to, you know, join in on the next live. So the idea for these actually came from one that I was taking some photos of. So I've actually been helping out with a couple of magazines. With everything that's going on at the moment, I'm doing some photography. So one of the cards is this kite fold card. Now I have done all my measurements myself and I've actually made a bigger version here because we were talking during the live about maybe having one for a gift card. So this is actually a gift card holder and I'll show you that in a moment. But these are all the same size and you can put them onto any size card you want. So I'm only going to show you to make this size kite and this side kite, this size kite. The actual card blanks, the bases, is entirely up to you. This is a 6 by 6 this is a 5 by 7 and this one here is a 3 by 6 So it ends up being 6 by 6 with the height of where I've stuck this kite. But you can imagine this is a smaller, you know, any size, like I said, that you want. And um, I just think it's gorgeous. I love that when it stands up, you know, the little kind of kite tail just hangs there onto the, you know, the surface. And I've used an embossing folder. I've got some glue. I'm going to probably change the glue on that because I'm waiting for some clear glue sticks because I've had to use gold ones. But you can see, and I just use the... Um, embossing folder there, the cloud one that I've got. I'll share the links to the product that I have here in my blog post. And then this one I just think is brilliant. So this is a 5 by 7 card so you could stick this onto a 5 by 7 blank you can see there and have the tail kind of dangling off at the bottom. But inside this one is your gift card and then you've got space here to write your message. Now you could put the gift card there if you wanted to and then it just closes there with a little velcro dot and you can pop that in an envelope and I just think that's a lovely way to give a gift card to someone, especially when you're mailing them, having the kite in the mail. I just think it's brilliant, really, really lovely. And then again, what I'll do is I'll just open them up. So they've all got a little bit of Velcro on the bottom. So you can see there, that's ready to stamp. And that's using the paper posies. They kept that kind of, you know, quite simple, I guess, because there's so much going on with that kite. And this is a top folding six by six, but you've got all that space inside to write a message as well. So, you know, you could have a nice little surprise maybe inside the actual kite. This one's well, I think these two are my favourites just because I love the background. Again, if I just lift that one up, you can see you've got that space inside there. And then finally, this one is just the same again. So they're all ready for me to kind of stamp. But the sentiment I've used there, Another Year Flies By, is just an old one from one of the free stamps that I got from Creative Stamping Magazine. So, you know, but any kind of flight related stamps I think work perfectly for these and you can see there that one I've actually kept plain I just think it's really pretty with that flower in the middle so enough of my talking let me get into the video and show you how to make them okay so like I said I'm just going to show you how to make the kites all of the backgrounds you can you know choose and do your mats and layers and everything you know yourself because that's really straightforward to do but okay so the first template here is for the smaller kite and I've also then got the one there for the 5 by 7 size. But both of them, you can use your regular size card stocks. Now, I would suggest that you use something that's a lighter weight. So around the 200 GSM kind of mark, I think, will be better. Because you've got those folds all around here, if you've got something too thick, it's just too bulky. And the card will probably crack and just not really look too good. Whereas if you have a much lighter, softer, by the time you add your mats and layers, it becomes pretty strong anyway. And you're going to pop it, if you are, onto your card blank as well. So what you want to do is if you want to make the smaller one, you want a piece of 11 by 4. And you can see everything that I've done here. And I've also put in red the score lines and then the black are the cut lines. Then you want to mark 3 and 3 quarters up on all of your sides. So 3 and 3 quarters and then from this end, 3 and 3 quarters up. And again, 3 and 3 quarters up. And that gives you these little, so you just put a little pencil mark there. And then you're going to score joining those marks together. You've already scored that one but these ones you're going to score across there and I'm going to do this on this one in a minute. I will speed that up but you can see I've already put a pencil mark here, here, here and here and then you just want to mark the centre of your four inch width there which is two so just put a pencil mark there and you can draw a pencil mark join in that if you want or just cut it you can pop it in your trimmer and cut it and again I will do all that in a moment there but that is what you need so if you want to pause the screen you know take a screenshot whatever you want to do like I said this will be on my blog as well but that's what you need for that size and then for this one here so you'll see it's a much bigger template but it's using two separate pieces and they're actually stuck together 
through the middle there. Ignore that there, I made a mistake with my scoring and I scored the wrong size. So with this one here, you want a piece of five by seven and a piece of five by seven and a half. Because I've already put my template together, we'll do this one now, just so that you can see what it is that you have to do. So this is my piece of five by seven and a half, and that's the one where you want to score at half an inch. So then that piece will be seven inches. So then you'll have two, you see there, which are five by seven. Okay, and that one, you just want to fold in half. You're basically just making this a longer piece of cardstock and then you will do all the scoring just as I have on that template. So you just want to create this one big piece. So I'm just going to pop my glue on that tab and just lay this piece over. And then this join is here, you'll see I've put join, it's your center score line. Okay, so this will actually be scored at seven. If I was to lie this in here, you see it lines up with my seven inches, it's 14 inches in length. So you just, you know, it's the same as doing that centre score line there. But it's already done for you because we've joined them together. So now if I just fold that over, you can see where we are with that one. And what I'm then going to do with this one is I'm going to come up each of the sides by five inches and pop a little pencil mark. Again, come up five and five. And you're just going to do that on all of these pieces, which you'll see me do. Like I said, I'll put it on just speed it up because I think when you've got this template it's very easy to see what you need to do. And then you can see again here with my red score lines you're then going to join across from this one to this one and this one to this one. And again if you want to draw pencil lines here because those are just going to be cut away anyway. And again if you just want to pause here just so you can see what it is that you need. And this is just your halfway again. So this is a piece of five inches wide. So you're just there putting a marker at two and a half. And that's at both ends. Okay, all of the mats and layers I will go through in a moment, but I'm now gonna go and get my actual pieces here, all scored and marked. And then we'll be back with two sizes of that kite. So there's both of my pieces now and you can see how they fit within the templates. Okay. Next we want to just fold those score lines. So just your middle one right through the centre, just make that a mountain fold along with these. So you're just folding them and everything should lay nice and flat and then you know you've got it all lined up. And then you want to take the centre one, make sure that is a nice point and just bring them in like that. If it's a little bit off, like mine has there, I'm just going to bring that across and just burnish those a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so there's one kite. Really easy. So again, I'll just go through with this one. So just, that one's already a mountain fold. So I'm just going to do these two here. See, so make sure your glue is dry where you've joined it. And then again, just bring down that centre. Make sure you've got a nice point there and that one lines up perfectly. And you can have that just as a card on its own as well. You don't need to put the gift card in there at all. Okay, so I'm going to pop those templates to one side and I will take photos of them and put them onto the blog. So what I would recommend at this point is just going over and burnishing all those score lines inside as well as far as you can and just try and burnish those so it will still be bouncy because of that fold and the fold is very familiar it's an, it's an origami fold but it's used it's one of the ones as well that's um, in like the twist and pop lots of pop-up style you know styles so it's quite a common fold okay now the mats and layers so I'm going to do this one first of all now, because you're working on angles and depending whether you're using double-sided cardstock or patterned paper with a design and so on, you will need to probably have two of everything. So that means that you could then have mats and layers all ready for another kite fold card. So it will make sense. So this one here is for the inside. I'll go through that in a moment. So first of all, here, these are going to be to create the long kind of bottom, let me bring this one in here. 
So these are going to be for these mats here at the bottom. So for these ones, I'm going to just bring in my trimmer. And we can go through all of the sizes. So these pieces here measure one and three quarters by three and a quarter. Okay. Now you want to cut them both, for a, you know, differently. So the, this one here, for example, I'm going to cut from the top left to the bottom right, and then this one I'm going to cut from the top right to the bottom left. So, and the reason being is because we're not working with an equal side, you know, shape. So we're not working with squares you will need to have two because these will not, so now I can have one, turn it upside down and it will go into there. I'm gonna to have to move that across a little bit again. Let me go on this side here, because it's just, I need to redo that score line. Maybe I've got one of my pencil lines slightly off, but there you go, you can see now. So that one's gonna go in there, but this one, unless I flipped it over, but then I wouldn't have the mirror card stock, isn't gonna go on that side. So that's why we then need to cut that one. So remember we've cut that one from the top right down to the bottom left. This one we're gonna cut from the top left down to the bottom right. So it's just the same kind of mats that we're doing here that we've done for the star cards because you were working on those angles. But now I've got that one that can go in there and that one can go in there and we have that tiny border, okay? But now you've got these two, if you just move them around that one that way and that one that way, you've already got mats ready for another kite. And those kites are very quick and easy to make. So, you know, why not do a few? You could do a batch, you know, if you want to put some, you know, in your stash and keep them for when you need them, then, you know, obviously do not waste these because they will all get used and I will be using them on another one because I've got kite cards coming out of my ears. <laughs> so that's for the base mats. Then for the top mats, again, it's the same principle. So these ones here, you want two pieces that are one and three quarters by one and a half. So with these ones here, again, I'm gonna pop them, they're rectangles, so just have them in like a landscape orientation. You're gonna do the same. So you're gonna cut one from, um, well, let's just do, yeah. So we do this one from the top left to the bottom right. Okay. And then this one I'm going to do from the top right to the bottom left. Make sure it's in landscape. So again, it's not an exact square, but now you can take the bottom two and they will sit perfectly up here. And then you just twist that one around and that one around and they're ready to go with those other two for your mats for your other, other kite. So I'm going to pop those ones there. Then if you want to do pattern paper, you might just want to do pattern paper and not have the holographic card stock like I have. But if you do want to do the layers like I have here, and I've also done a contrast, then you'll need these pieces. But also if you're working with double sided, which is going to make sense with this next one, when I show you the mats for the five by seven, you can actually just flip the card. So that's another way to save cardstock if you don't want to use it like I am. So for the mats, sorry, for the layers for this one, you'll want two pieces that are one and three eighths of an inch by two and seven eighths of an inch. And again, so I'm gonna do this one from the top left to the bottom right. Okay, so that one is gonna go over this side here. It's gonna go obviously on top of that mirrored. And I always just lay them down so you remember which way you've cut. So now I know I wanna do this one from the top right to the bottom left. Once you start making these, you will know exactly what it is that you need. Just follow the, you, you can see the angle and you can see the shape of the kite. So now, if I lay that one down there and grab, say, so this is this mat here, then this layer here, is going to go on top of that one there. Okay, it will go there because I've worked them all out. There we go. You'll get that nice border, like so. And then this one here, and then that one will go here. Now I may have to redo that again because I've just realised this is an or this does have a um, direction. So now if I turn that upside down, although it's the mats that I need. Can you see I'm gonna have my rainbows upside down? So take that into account as well. You can see actually, this is the first time I've used a directional paper. 
see those there they're all it doesn't matter which way you twist them so do take that into account as well but I'm happy with that one there okay and then again for the top ones you will want two pieces that are one and three eighths of an inch by one and one eighth of an inch and again in landscape orientation I'm going to do this one from top right to bottom left so that one can go over there so again just leave them there because it's always handy to see which way you've gone so then this one I'm going to do from top left to bottom right okay so I'm going to have this one which is going to go on top of this piece here and it's going to sit at the top there I was confusing myself then so <laughs> they're going to go like that okay those are all ready now to be stuck down I'm going to stick both of the kites together in a minute so and then you'll want this piece for the inside of that kite as well which is three and a half by five okay and you just want to mark with the center of both of these short sides which is what did I just say that was three and a half so it's one and three quarters just put a pencil mark at the top and the bottom and then just come down I believe it was one and a half so come down one and a half each side and then you're just going to cut you can you know do a pencil line if you want to join up these marks you know you're going to get a nice straight line but you're just going to cut like this piece will go inside here okay and if you want to do two then you just double it up so that's all ready to stick down now onto the five by seven I'll start off with this big one first so I've actually done two because for me these are gift card ones so I'm gonna have the gift card at the bottom so I've got this one all ready to go in there and you see that sits nicely with that frame so you will want two pieces that are four and a half by six and a half okay Again, you want to mark the centre, so, so it would be two and a quarter, top and bottom. And then for these ones, I came down two inches on both sides. So again, it might be worth joining these ones up just because it's a bit of a longer kind of section to cut. And just cut away the pencil line. I mean, that slight, you know, just making it that little bit smaller isn't really going to affect the card. I'm only just going to do those ones, but again, you just want to cut just from the centre there down to each point. Rub out any pencil marks or you can just flip it over. Okay, so there's my two mats for inside. Okay, so the mats and layers for this one will probably work out a lot more easier because for my mat here I'm using a double sided. So you only need one piece. So this is a piece of two and a quarter by four and a half. Okay and you're just going to cut across, it doesn't matter which one so I'm just going to cut from the top left, make sure it's in you know, um, portrait but just cut across because now I can just turn that one that way and I can just flip that one over and you can see there how I'm going to have my base mats for this one here and again they're just going to sit over exactly the same way like so. So you only need one piece and then, again, I've cut two, but you could just have one as well. So with this one here, this is a piece of, again, this is for the base layer. This is two by four. And I'm going to cut from the top left to the bottom right. And if I bring these back up again, I can turn this one around and it will sit over that one. And because this is double sided, the colours match but it's just a different pattern, you can see now, again, I don't need to have more. But if I wanted to use the same print, then you just have to cut that just opposite to how you cut that one. So I'm hoping this is all kind of helping you decide on what papers you want to use and maybe you don't have mirrored cardstock, you don't maybe have a lot, you might be just starting off. Doing the white matte because you can see it helps that pattern piece pop against the green card bank because we've got that white border okay so I'm not going to actually cut that bit I just wanted to show you for the video and then that's the same for the tops okay those top layers and um, I need to do the white as well because I didn't cut those ones so let me just grab my white okay so again because I'm using the white I only need one piece so this is two and a quarter by one and seven eighths 
and then I'm just going to cut this one again it doesn't matter because you can flip it and twist it and all that kind of stuff but now those are ready to go on the top here so one will go that way and then this one I can just flip around and that will go at the top there okay and then again for the pattern layer to go over the top so this is two by one and a half and again I'm just going to cut like so and then I'm just going to keep this one piece because I can just flip it over like so so that is your mats and layers so it, I'm hoping it, although there's a lot of measurements there this will all be wrote down on my blog but I just wanted to kind of show you different pattern papers and working with a mirrored cardstock and just you know and to have that contrast as well what you would need to do but if you do the contrast style you'll be able to make two kite cards if you just want to just have one and you want to kind of um, not break into a lot of card then go for this one where you use a double sided pattern paper and a plain colour for your mats okay so now I'm going to stick all of this down and then we're pretty much done Okay, so I've done all my mats and layers. I really love the two green kind of prints there together. I think it looks lovely and you can see the mats all in there. And all I done with the gift cards, I just used a foam pad or a glue dot just to keep it in place. And then there's that one as well. Really, really sweet, love those patterns. So next you wanna just grab a Velcro dot. You only need one really, cause you cut it like into segments. I mean, I did use one actually on this this size so I'm just getting that one there popping it right down the bottom you don't want it overhanging but this will help line everything up as well because you kind of pull it into place there we go but now that stays nice and closed okay but if you're making more of this size you'll see I've got a segment here left so I just cut one of these little glue dots and um, velcro dots I think it's the 10 mil in half and then in half again and then where you've got the right angle, you just kind of want to have that point down to the bottom of the kite. And then again, just make sure it lines right up. You don't want to see any of it, like so. Okay, so that's what I've done there. And then you want to add some string. So I'm going to bring in this green baker's twine for the, the green one there. And I've just got this kind of very thin pink organza which I thought would work quite nice as well now you can I'm going to stick it onto the back because I'm going to stick this onto a card blank so you won't see it but you might maybe with that one what I might do is just put a matte layer on the back of that because this one will not go onto a card for me anyway you could easily put it on there what I would suggest is that you stick your ribbon down before you stick a matte layer inside okay and then that way the the mat can go over the string but it's fine I'm not too worried like I said this one will eventually go onto a card so for this one here I'm just going to grab some of my glue there and just put a little bit on the back you can use you know double-sided tape as well if you want to but that will grab in a moment and again I'm just going to pop that one there you don't need them this long well you may be doing some bunting or something maybe you might be having it more as a decorative piece but I will trim that off I just quickly grabbed that while I was doing the video so then I've got all these bows now you can make little bows I did show you how to make a bow from oval nested dies I'll share my Facebook video anyway because I know some people like to have them playing in the background I know I watch a lot of lives and long videos when I'm crafting so you know check that out but it's a really straightforward thing but for this one I'm just going to use some of my ready-made bows I really like them and I've got a lot of this color which I think with these little pearl kind of there must be just little beads in the center let's get one that's a little bit neater but I'm going to have three the same color that one's got a lot of glue on it I don't like the look of that one you've got to kind of find the best looking ones out of them all there we go I'm gonna have those three I think coming down from the green one because it's kind of that it's like a rich 
gold colour and it kind of works really well with that one and then I've got that hot pink and I've got a few more so maybe I just have a trail of three hot pink. I'm going to be in need of some more bows soon. I've got oranges in there as well. There we go, there's another one. And that one's going to go there. And I think that will look really nice. So I'm just going to get these ones glued. Okay, so that's those two finished. You'll see that I did actually use my hot glue in the end, but I've got that little kind of kite tail there and then that one with the three hot pink ones I think looks really cute and then I've just brought in the other ones again so like I said this one will eventually go on to a card I probably will do the clouds again I really like this one I think it's lovely and just to give you an idea on your sentiments you can see there I've got that one with the silver embossing powder and then inside I've put some bunting as well I think it looks really really cute and then this I just love this this version just to have it kind of look like it's going off into the sky against that cloud background again so yeah that is how that one will probably end up being used and then again with the gift card kind of style or just that larger card you can see I've just put a simple topper in the middle of that one and I've just used some of the white blizzard nouveau drops in the center and then onto a six by six size again there as well so you can just see how that sits nicely on there. So I've got more than enough. <laughs> These ones will just stay as they are until I kind of decide on the occasion that I might be using them for. But I hope this tutorial has helped. I hope it's helped all of you that watch the Facebook Live because now you've got one that you can go to all the time. And I will be back again very soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.